exposing you to the power of praise. Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus, for it is the power of God unto salvation. I want to encourage you to pay close attention to today's message as we invite Pastor Ishula to come and share with us what the Lord has laid on his heart. Remain blessed. As we thank you for this time, Lord, as we go into your word, glorify yourself in this place today, in Jesus' name. Amen. Some years back, a diploma approached me and she said, Pastor, I've gone to so many crusades, but up till now, I have not seen one single miracle. And my response to her on that day was, just watch carefully and very soon you will see one. Because the supernatural is real. And there are places today where God is still performing miracles. Glory to God. Today, the Lord has asked me to talk a little bit about two different things. And the first one is the beauty of terrible circumstances. How can terrible situations be deemed beautiful? Well, that lady was convinced a few months after that discussion. But it did not just happen. If we look at 1 Samuel chapter 9 and read from verse 3, it said, Now the donkeys of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. So Kish said to his son, So take now with you one of the servants and arise, go search for the donkeys. As you can see, I'm holding in my hand a bottle of wine. John chapter 2, we find out that there was a bad situation. Jesus was at a wedding and uh, their wine ran out. And I said last week that this year is the year of good wine. It's the year you will receive instructions that will help you turn your water into good wine. Well, turning water into good wine is not very easy. Sometimes you have to run out of wine first. The diplomat lady was sincere. In asking a question she was honest because a lot of times we talk about the supernatural we talk about the divine intervention we talk about the miracle we talk about miracles and people just can't see it they can't feel it they can't see one what happened that eventually convinced that particular lady was a few months after she raised that concern, the lady was diagnosed with terminal cancer. And uh, this lady was given only five months to leave. She was told in five months you will die it's not in five months you might die it's like in five months you will be gone the lady that got this news came to the church the church decided to pray with her and she began to fast and pray for about seven days the lady that was diagnosed with cancer was from the Philippines and the diplomat lady was from Africa. 
But by the time this Filipina was diagnosed, there was already in the church a sense of camaraderie, a sense of belonging that this lady that came from Africa decided that she was going to participate in all the steps that will be needed in bringing about the supernatural in the life of this other lady from the Philippines. So what did she do? Without telling anybody, she began to fast and pray for the lady from the Philippines that was diagnosed with terminal cancer. It was leukemia. Well, in a matter of weeks, the same doctor that told the lady from the Philippines that she was going to die in five months, wrote her a clean bill of health. She told her to stop a very expensive medication for the problem. And the diplomat lady was so excited that at last, not only did she witness a real divine healing, she was part of it. The fact that she was willing to fast, to go without food. This is someone who could afford whatever she felt like eating. She lived in one of the best parts of town. She had the money. In fact, her husband was the financial secretary for the entire embassy. But she decided to go without food because of this particular lady, because of the lady from the Philippines. Now, the beauty of terrible circumstances is what we're talking about today. Brethren, God had a plan. And sometimes, His plan for us and not as convenient as we want it to be. God had a plan for Saul. But in order to bring that plan to pass, Saul had to run out of wine. Something bad had to happen in his family. I, I, I'm not using this to excuse bad events. The purpose of this message today is for you to know that the fact that you are going through circumstances that are not as convenient, that are not as desirable as you want, it's not tantamount to the fact that God has forgotten you. In fact, it's not a sign of defeat in your life. It is how you manage that bad situation that would determine the eventual outcome. Saul had to go and look for his father's donkeys. They were lost. And it was in the process of trying to find those donkeys that he was informed that he was going to be the next king of Israel. Hallelujah. Terrible circumstances, when we go through them, tend to intimidate us. You know, uh, in, in fact, earlier today I was at a service and the pastor was talking about the Bible, about how the Bible came down to us. And during the message, he said something about people using their hands. To write pages of the Bible in some countries where Bibles are not allowed. And after the message, I went to him and I said, I just want you to know that even though you've heard about people who smuggled Bibles across borders, 
you are actually looking at one today. It, 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 I don't know how you look at that, but it didn't just happen. What led to the situation that gave me the opportunity to participate in that particular work was not pleasant. In actual fact, it was because I was without work. I couldn't go to work. There was no job for me. And I said, okay, I don't have a job. I could sit here crying and complaining about the fact that I couldn't fend for my family. Or I can make use of this opportunity, know that time is flying, and tomorrow I might wake up and find out that I have a job then I won't be able to do this. So I quickly signed up with a team that was smuggling Bibles into China. And up till today, even though that was many, many, many years ago, I'm still thankful to God for giving me that opportunity to be one of those people who smuggled Bible into China. Your bad situation is a blessing in disguise as a child of God. In 1 Samuel chapter 9 verse 3, the donkeys were missing. Why? Because God was going to lead Saul to a place that he will not otherwise go. Glory to God. It was in searching for those donkeys that Saul eventually met with Samuel. One of his servants said, The man of God is here. Now that we can't find these donkeys, why don't we go and talk to the man of God and see, maybe he might tell us something. And that was when Saul was informed about his promotion. Each time the Lord makes a promise to you, the enemy wants to come in and test your resolve. The enemy wants to come in and try to see if he can pull that promise away from you. That's why this year, you're going to spend time seeking the face of the Lord. First, you've got to understand that not every bad thing that happened to you is really, really bad. Some of them are blessings in disguise. You've got to recognize that. And once you are able to recognize that, it will be a lot easier for you to go before the Lord and say, God, what do you want me to do with this? This situation has been presented before me. What do you want out of this? I know that this can be a little bit challenging in an environment where the world view states that there is no relationship between the spirit world and the material world. But it's either you believe the Bible or you believe your culture. Because there is what is called meta theology. This infallible word of God is higher than any culture in the world. If you elevate your culture above the word of God this year, you will create problems for yourself. But if you can ask the Spirit of the Lord to explain to you what is in this word, then you will find out that this is your year of good wine. Hallelujah. It's a brief interruption. A few nights ago, the Spirit of the Lord revealed to me something that's about to happen in the middle of the night. As we speak, there is a Middle Eastern country that is planning to smuggle into the United States 
a weapon of mass destruction. As soon as they are able to get it across the border into the country, the plan is to release it into the hair. One thing that is certain about biological or chemical weapons is that they are very difficult to control once they are released into the hair. In 2 Kings chapter 6, the Spirit of the Lord used prophet Elisha to save Israel many times, to protect the country many, many times. When I received this revelation, I struggled with releasing it. But some of the things that God showed me in May of last year that I released also on this broadcast happened. And if I refuse to release this information and something happens, I know I, I will find it very difficult to forgive myself. Brethren, when God releases things like this, the purpose is to protect us. If we will pray as children of God, if we will pray about this and know that God can advance it, God, the same way that God refused to let the bomb go off on Christmas Day on that aircraft, God can also protect us from this. I want to encourage you to please pray about this because it's very serious. Now we go back to the message. Thank you. The next message that the Lord gave to me is this, and I want you to listen carefully. The Spirit of the Lord said, There are many one shoe Christians all over the place. A lot of Christians are walking around with only one shoe instead of a pair of shoes. A lot of us are in partial obedience. God asks you to do something and you do half of what God asks you to do and you just stop. You think that is enough. And the Spirit of the Lord is saying you will have to change that this year in order for you to be able to enter into the promise that the Lord has made for you. In 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 13, Samuel came to Saul and Saul said to him, Blessed are you of the Lord. I have carried out the command of the Lord. But Samuel said, What then is this bleating of the sheep in my ears, and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? Saul said, They have brought them from the Amalekites, for the people spare the best of the sheep and oxen to sacrifice to the Lord your God. But the rest we have utterly destroyed. Then Samuel said to Saul, Wait, and let me tell you what the Lord said to me last night. And he said to him, Speak. Saul said, Samuel said, Is it not true that though you were little in your own eyes, you were made the head of the tribes of Israel? And the Lord anointed you king over Israel. And the Lord sent you on a mission and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they are exterminated. Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord, but rushed upon the spot and did what was evil in the sight of the Lord? One shoe Christians. A lot of believers are going about wearing only one shoe instead of a pair of shoes. You know, some years back, while I was in my four year degree program, I was still in Africa and uh, I had malaria you know uh, I took some pills he went away and then he came back again so I took some pills he went away and then he came back again so it got to a point that I was frustrated so I had a friend who was in the medical school I asked her one day, I said, why is it that all the drugs that were supposed to be used for malaria, how come they are no longer working for me? And the lady said, 
did you complete your dosage? And the light came on. You see, what I was doing at the time, usually when you have malaria fever, you know, which is usually caused by mosquitoes, and we had a lot of mosquitoes in Africa, okay? You know, what happens is once you start that medication, you got to complete the dosage. You got to use 10 tablets before you start. But what I was doing was each time I felt like I was having malaria, I would take the, med uh, the, 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 the medicine and once I start feeling good, I stop. So in most cases, I barely used four or six instead of the full ten. And that lady told me, said, that's the problem. The next time you take this medication, make sure you finish everything. Complete your dosage and then tell me what happens after that. And that was the end of the problem. A lot of Christians are not getting results because of half obedience. Imperfect obedience. God says, go to the river and dip yourself in the river seven times. They dip themselves into the river four times. They see a little bit of the sickness gone and then they take off. Now when they get home at night, they check again, the leprosy is back. You know I'm talking about Naaman. We need to learn how to completely obey the voice of the Lord. When the Lord asks you to give $10, for example, give $10. When the Lord says, don't give, don't give. When the Lord says, fast today, then fast today. Glory to God. Samuel told Saul in this particular passage that the kingdom has been removed from him just because he will not do what God asked him to do. A lot of us are falling short of the destiny of, 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 of what God had in mind for us, of the promised land just because we are not doing what he asked us to do or because we're going halfway i'll be praying with you right now and i want you to take these things to heart not every bad situation that comes your way is really really bad you know i read about a particular man of god that was in south america for a crusade, it was open here at crusade, and during that crusade, it started raining, and people were getting really sad that the rain was going to destroy the equipment and all that stuff that people were going to leave. But there was a blind man that came to that crusade, and as the rains were dropping on his face. He tried to wipe off the rain from his face. And that's how he received his healing. As he was wiping off the water droplets, his eyes opened for the first time. It's not every rain that falls on you that is a bad one. It's not every bad situation that you see that is actually bad. Some of them are there only to lead you to that which you have always prayed for. Glory to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this time. And as many as are going to go out this week and do your will, Father, honor your word in their lives. In the name of Jesus, we give you all the glory, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, prayer. Amen. Hi, this is Dr. Ishila. Wishing you a fantastic 2010. The year 2010 will be a year of good wine for many. 
in John chapter 2, Jesus was at a wedding and something bad happened at that wedding. They ran out of wine. Just like many of us ran out of wine in 2009. But the promise for the coming year is that you are going to have your water turned into good wine. Now, what do you need to do? The same thing that some of the people helping the host in John chapter 2 did in order to get that water turned into good wine. Listening to instructions. You've got to listen carefully this year to instructions from the Lord Himself. Hallelujah. I look forward to so many testimonies this year. Please join us on this station on Saturdays at 5 p.m. just to see if the Lord will have your instructions ready for you. Hallelujah. I know there are many people that listen today that could not even understand what we're talking about. If you are not sure of your salvation, if you can't say yes, to this question that if Jesus were to come today that you will be able to go with him then I want to pray with you right now because except a man but born again he cannot see the kingdom of God you must be born again in order for you to enter into the kingdom of God I will pray with you right now I want you to repeat after me Lord Jesus I'm sorry for my sins. I confess them. I believe that you died for me on the cross of Calvary. I confess with my mouth that you died for me on the cross of Calvary. I accept you into my life today. Lord, save me. I am now yours. Amen. Satan, I don't have anything to do with you anymore. I belong to the kingdom of God. The kingdom of light. You can no longer touch on me. Because I bear on my body the marks of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Brethren, if you have prayed that prayer with me, I believe that Angels are now rejoicing in heaven over your salvation. I want you to email me through the hourofpraise.com website. Get in touch with me so we can begin to pray for you and guide you through the new life. Thanks for watching Our Praise Day. Our prayer line is always open. You can call us at 404-217-9045. You can also reach us online at www.hourofpraise.com. This is Susan Chapman thanking you for watching. Remain blessed.